All right, guys, Mr. G here with a movie review, and sorry for the acoustics, but I'm on holiday in Berlin. Uh, it's Christmas Eve, and I took uh, younger G, who's eight, to go see uh, Rise of Skywalker. And I was like, I love Star Wars. I'm a big Star Wars fan. Uh, but disclaimer, this was a giant dumpster fire of garbage, which is why I felt motivated to make this review in a kitchen in Berlin on Christmas Eve for you guys. So I'm going to start with a spoiler-free version. And then we're going to tell you when the spoilers are coming. So you can still watch no spoilers yet. But let's just begin with the fact that the writing in this particular Star Wars movie made me miss the writing from George Lucas. I actually was like, wow, the plot in the prequels wasn't that bad after watching The Rise of Skywalker. Almost made me miss George Lucas. Not sure what J.J. Abrams was doing with this movie, but apparently Disney and Abrams thought that we all have the attention span of a three-year-old uh, and that we don't really care for plot points, writing, or anything involving Star Wars lore. Okay, that's done. Spoiler time. So if you haven't seen the movie, do not watch any more of this video. And if you love Star Wars, go see the movie. Go see it. I'm not trying to ruin it for you. I love Star Wars. I'm going to go see it. Um, you be the judge of what you think of it. These are my thoughts uh, on the latest Rise of Skywalker film. So don't watch a second further because we're going to do lots of spoilers. Okay, cut to the movie. Uh, we're like 30 seconds into the movie and Kylo Ren is like, boop, 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 boom, finding a magic planet. Guess what? Emperor Palpatine isn't dead. The First Order is the last bit of the Empire. But who cares? The Empire's totally back now because we have Palpatine. Who cared about Snoke? Snoke doesn't even matter. We had two episodes of him. Poof, doesn't matter. It's all Emperor Palpatine the whole time. What? Okay. Great. None of those plots mattered. Guess what else? He's like, hey man, um, here's an entire fleet of a thousand Star Destroyers. Boom. They came from this one planet in the middle of nowhere. Don't worry, a couple of cultists on a planet in the side of the galaxy were able to build an entire fleet of Star Destroyers. But no, no, catch this. That entire fleet of Star Destroyers all equipped with planet-killing weapons. Because why not, right? We had Death Star 1, Death Star 2, Star Killer Base. Why not now? Just an entire fleet of hidden super-secret Star Destroyers uh, that all have planetary-killing weapons. Which is ridiculous. We just spent all of these shows destroying the, Emperor, or destroying the Empire, taking them out, and then it's just like, snap of the fingers, all back. Don't even get me started... Uh, on the resistance, right? The resistance is like, oh, they're just getting beat back and totally wrecked. And like, oh my God, what are we going to do? How do we take these guys out? Now, the Kylo and Ray part was all right. All right. They got this connection between the force, blah, blah, blah. That's okay. But the whole fact that they just brought Palpatine back and th made a whole brand new empire for the rebellion to fight just, just right away. And then at the end of the film, uh, we find out, you know, there's Palpatine. He's alive. He actually wants to be killed so that he can possess Rey because he's all the Sith spirits in one. He's just going to like take over a body and become some sort of empress dude, which is really sounds like a sub bureaucratic position. If you've got to vie with a thousand other evil Sith Lords in the body of one 20 something year old. Anyway, that's weird. He changes his evil plan like five times at the end of the movie. He's like, first you kill me and I possess your body. And then he's like, no, 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 no. Uh, I'll, uh, have you guys sit on the throne? And he's like, no, no, no. I'm going to suck your life force out, and then I'm still going to be alive. And he's like, no, no, no. I'm going to kill you. And then he's like, you know, wait, wait. I'm super powerful. I'll just use the force now to destroy all of the rebellion. Now it's like, oh, the end of the movie. Right, don't worry. The rebellion has a plan. They never thought of this before. Just send Chewie and Lando out in the Falcon and ask for help. Ask for help. And guess what? Boom. 2,000 ships just show up. To help out because they were like, we never thought to ask for help before. <sighs> uh, this was ridiculous. I don't know. From one scene to the next, even my eight-year-old son was like, what, dad? What's what's happening now? I don't know. As, as a fan, a big Star Wars nerd and a huge fan, I felt like the people that wrote this had no respect uh, for the viewer's intelligence or the fact that any of the overarching plot from the other films didn't even matter. They just wanted to have a film with big Empire baddies getting fought by heroic Republic dudes and ridiculous, just silly things. And I get it. It's Disney and it's a movie that's okay to take for younger kids. But I mean, 
oh, it was just a hot dumpster fire of stupidity and one thing to the next just changing its mind about what kind of movie it wanted to be. And uh, I was, I enjoyed watching it. I was just disappointed. Uh, and then it felt like it threw everything un- under the table and under the bus, all the other plot lines and the fact that Palpatine had been killed. And they're like, oh, you know, Darth Plagueis and yeah, he's back and cloning. Well, if he's back and cloning, why can't he just clone himself another body? No, because reasons he wants to be in Ray, And it just, it's, I mean, really? It took like thousands of worlds like so many years to build the first fleet but he just had a thousand fleet built underneath ice on one planet in the middle of nowhere with no economy just i don't stupid and they all had to have planet destroying lasers really they had to do that and then they just blow up a random planet that they just showed us 20 minutes ago and like hey look here's kajimi i mean we're gonna blow it up now we're like okay also uh what's his name poe he runs into a girlfriend that we see for two minutes and then she shows up at the end and they're like, well, heart throat. No one cares. No, but you didn't have no reason to care about this character. So sorry about the quality of the audio and the video. Don't have my webcam. I'm out on holiday. Um, go see the film or if you've already seen it, um, let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments. Welcome to disagree with me. This is just my opinion. I don't usually do movie reviews, but I was so fired up on this one. I decided to do it. So, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Hopefully I don't end up dying like Snoke because nobody cared about him and wasn't a real plot point apparently after two movies. All right, I'm done. I'm done. Mr. G out.